Hey, what's up guys? Here we are at 7 p.m. and we are live. I got a bunch of stuff to talk about today. We're gonna talk about three things. A, my new album is out now. B, I got a brand new video dropping this Friday. And C, I got a couple new tours coming up. So that's what we're gonna talk about. I'll try to keep up with the comments. You guys gotta let me get through my three points first, which are, like I just said, one new album, two new music video coming this Friday, and three, I'm announcing two brand new tours. So let's get into it. Uh, yeah, as you guys probably know, my new album just dropped, Ghost Stories. Um, huge, huge, huge thank you to everybody that's picked up that album. It means the world to me. You guys have no idea how badly I needed it. And you have no idea how many proud projects you're allowing me to do with the support from this album. So thank you guys so much. Like literally every dollar I make goes back into making music videos and producing albums and doing crazy stuff to keep you guys entertained. So, um, so yeah, first things first, my brand new album, Ghost Stories, is out now. Every single copy is signed, as you can see right there. I sign, package, and label these things all myself. I've been up to like four in the morning every day for like four days signing, packaging, labeling, and shipping your albums. So that's the new album, Ghost Stories. Woo. There's 21 songs on it, six of which have already been released. Uh, what songs are already out? Everybody Hates Me, I Wish, If I Was Black, Sad Rappers, Straight White Male, Buttholes, and I'm Sorry are already out for you guys to stream and watch the music videos. Uh, but there's 14 more unreleased songs that you can only hear if you grab this right here. Ghost Stories out now. Everyone is every single copy is signed. www.hangovergang.com. Enjoy it. It's crazy because like everybody says that like I Wish is their favorite song or Buttholes is their favorite song. Everybody Hates Me is their favorite song. I don't even think the best song from this album is even out yet. So... Seven songs are out, 14 unreleased. That's a track list, 22 records, 22 songs on there. Ghost Stories out now, www.hangovergang.com. Also, there's like my, my old CD, which is only a year old, but Death Threats is also there. All those copies are signed as well. You can get them individually, you can get them in a combo pack. There's also a bunch of other like merch packs where you get like barbed wire necklaces, t-shirts, bandanas, uh ski masks stickers um there's just like a ton of new stuff leather ball caps i have one of the leather caps in here somewhere i'll show you guys it's really really dope anyway it's a new album's out now www.hangovergang.com if you want one i'm shipping every single day this week so yeah i'm up late signing them packaging them labeling them putting them in the mail for you guys i really appreciate the support thank you guys so much so Okay, let's just keep talking about the album for a minute because there was like a couple things that I wanted to talk about. There's a lot of people who were super duper upset that the album is in physical form and not streaming on Spotify and Apple Music and iTunes and all that stuff, which I fully get. I understand it. I understand like the convenience of being able to stream music and I respect the fact that everybody's upset, but please just like understand that like what we're talking about here is like convenience of streaming music versus the experience of having a physical copy. So I'm not about convenience. I'm about having an experience for people to like listen to this record and really take it in. Like when I was a kid, I was the guy that was sitting outside the CD store at 8 a.m. waiting for it to open at 9 a.m. so I could get inside, get the album I wanted, then I'd get to hold it in my hands, I'd rush home, unwrap it, take the CD booklet out, put my headphones on, and listen to that album and like really take it in. And it was like a big experience. There was like magic in that. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create an experience for people. I understand that it's not that convenient but it is an experience. When that thing reaches your house, you get to hold it in your hands. It's an album that you helped make. You know what I mean? You, you helped do this. So it gets to your house, you get to take it out of your mailbox, look at it, 
hold it, read everything that it has to offer, pop it in your CD player or computer or whatever it is, and you get to listen to it. And that's an experience. And that's how I want my music to be received. I don't want it to just be streamed passively while you're walking the dog or doing the dishes or wiping your ass. I want you to be able to like sit down, put your headphones on and really take this album in. That's how I designed it when I wrote it and made the beats. And that's how I want you to experience it. Not that it's never going to come into streaming, but you have to remember, there's already seven songs from this album streaming. Like I said, Everybody Hates Me, I Wish, If I Was Black, Sad Rappers, Straight White Male, Buttholes, I'm Sorry. All those records are already streaming. That's seven songs. Most artists these days drop albums that are 10 or 11 songs long. I already have seven songs from this album streaming. That's already almost an entire album by today's standards. It just so happens that there's 14 other unreleased songs on here that you can experience if you get the CD. So that's just, you know, what it is. Um, and like, I don't know, it's art. Like, look at this album cover, man. It's like real art. We spent a lot of time and energy like putting this thing together and like having it be a beautiful thing. So it's just to me, it's the same as like if you get a physical copy, you get to actually hang this thing on your wall or put it on your mantle or sit it on your desk or whatever it is. But like this, this is art to me. Like it's a really beautiful, um, it's a really beautiful album. So anyways, that's, that's my whole rant about the streaming thing. If you want a copy, www.hangovergang.com. I hope you guys love it. If you enjoy it half as much as I do, then mission accomplished. Uh, I think it's a really great project. Can't wait for you guys to hear it, experience it. Let me know what you think. Um, I guess, yeah, like, I don't want to rant about it too much, but a lot of people were saying that it was like a really selfish move for me to like put it out in just physical form and that it's not on streaming. And like a lot of people were saying that like it was a selfish move and it was like a it was like a dirty thing to do to my fans and, and stuff like that. And it's just like, I don't know, man, I feel like I do a lot for my fans. And like you guys know, I don't even like to use the word fans. I use friends and family. I feel like I do a lot for people. I put out a ton of free music. I put out a ton of like free music videos. Look, go look at the last three posts on this page. I've responded to literally like tens of thousands of comments. I sat here for like eight hours, two days in a row, just responding to people. I don't think other artists do that. If they do, like, I don't see it, but that's a lot for me to sit around and do that. I hand sign every single CD. I've been up till 4 a.m. for days on end, signing every single CD. I pack them myself. I label them myself. I put them in, into the mail myself. I stay at venues till three, four in the morning every night after I perform just to make sure that everybody gets a hug or a handshake or an autograph or whatever it is. Um, I don't know. So when people, especially when my fans start saying I'm selfish and stuff like that, it really does like touch me on some level because I just feel like I bend over backwards a lot to, to make people feel good and make people feel like they're participating and make people feel like we're really connecting because um, I think that's really important that we really do connect. So, yeah, I don't know. It just like rubbed me the wrong way, man, when people start saying that I'm selfish and stuff like that and whatever. It's lame. I feel like I'm busting my ass for people. I'm going to continue to bust my ass for people. And to the ones that really do appreciate that, thank you guys so much. You guys are real fans. You guys are the hangover gang. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say it enough. It really does mean the world. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, we'll circle back to the album in a minute. I'm going to take some questions in a second. But like the other big thing we got to talk about is brand new video this Friday. This Friday, 9 a.m., brand new video. <sighs> Feels like we've been doing a lot of videos lately. Um, this next video that I'm dropping on Friday is unlike anything that I have ever, 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 ever done before. Unlike anything I've ever done before, completely different. Um, and you'll know why it's different like the second you see it. Um, you know, it's like, oh man, I feel like we've covered so much ground and done so many different types of music that it's really hard to imagine. Like, well, what could he be doing now that's different than everything else? But you'll just have to like tune in on Friday and find out it's insane. Um, all I'll say is this, a lot of people from the beginning that have become supporters and fans and friends and stuff like that have been like, yo, I really love rock music. I think... 
I feel like you're a rocker at heart. You should try your hand at some rock stuff. I really like metal music. I'm a huge metal head. I feel like you should incorporate some metal into your music and stuff like that. So all I can say about Friday's video release is that those comments and those suggestions did not fall on deaf ears at all. So new music video this Friday, 9 a.m. It's crazy. It's probably the biggest video I've ever done in terms of, well, you'll know when you see it. There's some really insane stuff in this video. Um, so I'm super excited to give it to you guys this Friday, 9 a.m. new video, unlike anything I've ever done before. Two ways to see it first, you can either A, subscribe to YouTube or B, join the Hangover Gang newsletter. I will put links to both of those things in the comments as soon as we are done this live stream. If you see my comment, please give it a thumbs up so it pushes it to the top of the feed and makes it easier for everybody else to find my comments so they can subscribe to YouTube or join the Hangover Gang mailing list. There you go. Um, okay, so I'll move on to number Three. I got a list here. I'm trying to be professional about this stuff. I got two tours coming up. Hey! I know it's really great that we get to do these lives and we get to talk to each other on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all that stuff. But the best part of this whole music thing is hitting the road and being able to see you guys in person, shake your hands, give you a hug, hear your story, sign your t-shirt, all that stuff. So there's two tours coming up, the first of which is going down with Struggle Jennings, the homie from Nashville. We're about to go crush it on a really short run. I think we're only doing like 15 shows together, um, but it's gonna be rad. So me and Struggle Jennings, we're gonna go out in October, which is coming up right away. I think our first show is like October 2nd. So if you go to my website, www.hangovergang.com, you will be able to find the ticket schedule. You'll be able to buy tickets. You'll be able to find your city. You'll be able to see everything to do with that tour. So October, Tom McDonald, Struggle Jettings, we're hitting the road and we're going to kill it for you guys. We're going to see you guys out there and party and have a wicked time. So I'm very, very excited. I'll be leaving here in like four weeks. Um, so it's coming up right away. www.hangovergang.com. I'll also be posting like the tour and all the dates and cities and stuff on my page in the next couple days and you guys will be able to grab tickets through there too. So that's the first tour, October with Struggle Jennings. The second tour is taking place in November with a really badass rock band called Falling in Reverse. I don't know if you guys know them. You should know them. You should know Struggle. Falling in Reverse is a really dope band. Uh, we're going out and doing like 25 or 26 shows together in November and they're all over the country. I know there's a lot of places, small places and just like places in far corners of the country that I haven't been to before um, on my solo tours, but that's kind of like the best part about these next two tours is every place that I haven't hit before, we're hitting them all on these two tours, which is really, really cool. So the Falling in, Rever Falling in Reverse tour dates, um, I believe, I have a poster and stuff. I will also post the poster for that in the next couple days. Or you can go to the Falling in Reverse website and uh, find out what city, what date, what time, and grab tickets there. Um, they're not on my website yet because I have contracts to sign. And as soon as those contracts are signed, those dates will be on my website. So you can either go out and search the internet, Tom McDonald falling in reverse, and you can grab your tickets uh, and I'll see you out on the road. Or you can wait for me to post them on the website. I will also be posting the posters to this page this week and you will see all the cities and dates and stuff like that. So those are like my two or my three big main things. A, I got a brand new album out. It's called Ghost Stories. Every single copy is signed. I sign them, package, label them, and mail them myself. If you have a copy, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It means the world. If you don't have a copy, please go grab one, www.hangovergang.com. It helps a lot with all the music videos and stuff I'm trying to do, and I really appreciate the support. So my new album's out now, www.hangovergang.com. It's called Ghost Stories. There's also like a ton of different merch packs that come with necklaces, bandanas, stickers, ski masks, t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, ball caps, a bunch of different stuff. So there's lots of merch packs, www.hangovergang.com. <sighs> oh my God. I feel like I have so much stuff to talk about. Number two on my list, we're circling back. Brand new video this Friday. It's one of the most advantageous videos I've ever shot. You'll understand what I mean when you see it. 
there's fire and explosions and insanity. And uh, it's the musically, it is far beyond anything that I've ever done before. Um, just it's just completely different. It's just completely different. Um, and that's all I could really say. I'll drop the artwork for the new song on Thursday so you guys will know what the song is titled and you might be able to tell what it's about from that title. I'm not really sure. You guys are pretty intuitive like that sometimes. So, um, And that song will also be dropping on streaming services. So for all the people that were angry about me putting out my album in physical form, that's an eighth song from the album that will be streaming Friday. And if you want to hear the other 14 songs, you can buy the CD, www.hangovergang.com. Like I just snuck that little extra piece of promo in there. So new albums out, new video drops this Friday. The third thing is two tours are coming up right now. You can go to my website, hangovergang.com and see the dates for the Struggle Jennings tour, which I will be departing on early in October. The second is the first date, I believe. Uh, and then Struggle and I will do two or three weeks worth of shows together, which should be a blast. And then in November, I'm hitting the road with Falling in Reverse, and we are going to rock your socks off in a bunch of other cities in America, and it's going to be a really great time. So I'll post um, posters for both those tours this week. I hope you guys come out and see me. Um, the last two solo tours I did were like amazing. I stayed till like three or four in the morning. I meet everybody. I shake everybody's hands. I sign their CDs. I take pictures. I do selfies. I do the whole thing. So I hope you guys come out and, and hang. It'll be a really great time. And it's one of my favorite parts of this whole music thing is getting able to meet you guys in the flesh. So let's do it. Let's rock and roll. Okay. I'll take some questions. If anybody has some good questions... This would be your time. I'm here. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll answer like a few of your guys' questions and then I will circle back through my promo again by my new CD, www.hangovergang.com. Watch my new video on Friday. Sign up for the mailing list and subscribe to YouTube and come see me on the road on a tour. I'll circle back to that in a minute after I take some questions. Uh, okay. Mark Draving says, where did you start your wrestling career? Uh, I started my wrestling career in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, um, on the south side of the city and quickly sort of started wrestling in Vancouver, BC on the west coast, did some stuff in Winnipeg, wrestled on a bunch of pay-per-views, um, did Saskatchewan a few times, did shots all over Canada. So yeah, it started in Canada and it also ended there. Also, I just have to say this one time. I told my dad I was going to give him a shout out. My dad is in Nepal right now. Uh, he's going to check out Everest and do a bunch of other crazy stuff in the Himalayan mountains. It's like 7 a.m. where he is in Nepal. So I got to say, what's up, dad? Good morning. I hope this was worth you waking up for. Uh, I love you lots. Kick ass out there. And I will talk to you soon. Um, so I just had to get that in real quick. Because if there was no dad, there would be no me, and there would be no hangover gang, and there would be no you. Well, you guys would exist, but you wouldn't be in the hangover gang, you know what I mean? My dad's not that busy. But, uh, but yeah, this quick shout out. Uh, Preston Moore says, what's the hardest part about production of videos and stuff like that? Uh, the hardest part of producing the videos is my girlfriend is the director and the cameraman, and... That's kind of, <laughs> that kind of says it all. Uh, no, that's not the hardest part. She's amazing. Uh, the hardest part is just like, I mean, this is not an exciting answer by any means. And it's, you know, it just is what it is. But just like the scheduling and scheduling the extras and getting everybody there on time. And because we do it all ourselves, it's just like a lot. It's overwhelming. We do all the costumes. We do all the locations. We do all the casting. We do the editing. We do the coloring. We do the releases. We do everything. So I guess it's not any one thing that's tough. It's just that like the whole overarching uh, workload is just intense. Um, but it's always worth it. You guys check out the videos and you tell me that you love them most of the time. And, uh, and that makes it worth it. So it's cool. I'm just flipping through here, uh, looking at your guys' questions. Hey, my dad says, hey, T, greetings from Nepal. What's up, dude? 
uh, 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 uh. A lot of people are asking um, what cities I'm going to and stuff on tour. Like I can't just go through and answer all those questions. Just I will be announcing the tours like ASAP and then you guys will, you can look at the tour posters and find your city on the poster and I'll see you there. I'm pretty much going everywhere between the struggle tour in October and the following reverse tour in November. We're hitting like every major city or at least in the vicinity of every major city. So you, everybody, no matter where you live, you should be able to come out to a show or two. Um, so don't sweat it. Uh, Randy Patton says, would you consider some, some sort of VIP ticket so you get to hang out for a couple hours and blah, 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 blah. Look, I don't do VIP meet and greets. I don't do any of that stuff. Like, I think it's super lame that like artists charge extra money for like VIP meet and greets or like handshake and a photo thing. And they usually sell VIP tickets that are like 10 or $20 more expensive than regular tickets. I think that's super lame. I'd never ever charge anybody a dime to shake my hand or take a photo with me or hang out. I hang out at the shows regardless. I'll be there till three in the morning, making sure that everybody gets a handshake and everybody gets a photo and everybody gets an autograph and all that stuff. I don't do that extra like, charging people money to meet me type of thing a that's just like a lame fucking money grab and b it's just like weirdo shit like paying to meet like another human being like what even is that that's like the most bizarre fucking business structure thing ever so i don't do that but i will meet you i will shake your hand i will take your photo i'll do all that stuff you don't have to pay me a dime for it uh you could buy my album at www.hangovergang.com and you could bring it to a show and i'll sign it for you if you really want to and if not that's fine i'll still take a selfie with you shake your hand do the whole thing so don't sweat it um Bradley Schaffer says, did you intentionally drop the name of your album Ghost Stories in the song Exposure? You know what, Bradley? That's a really good question. And uh, I did intentionally drop the name of the album in Exposure because I'm a little bit of a planner sometimes. I think really hard about this music stuff. I'm going to show you guys the ball cap right now. Your death threats were ghost stories. Get it? Your death threats were ghost stories. Pretty clever. If I do say so myself, your death threats were ghost stories. Yeah, this is a leather hat, by the way, and they're available at www.hangovergang.com. Enjoy that. Um, I did intentionally do that. So thank you for picking up on that. I thought it was pretty clever, and I'm glad that somebody's recognizing it. Next question. Lucas Pohl says, is GFBF still a thing? Ooh, good question, Lucas. Yes, GFBF is most definitely still a thing. I'm still uh, madly in love with my girlfriend and dating her. So as long as we are a couple, the band will exist. If, for those of you that don't know, GFBF is a band that I made with my girlfriend. GFBF is short for girlfriend, boyfriend. And we have a bunch of music out on YouTube that you probably haven't heard because we never really talk about it because my stuff kindly took over. Um... But I was thinking that, you know, just for shits and giggles, we have an, a GFBF album already done. It's pop music and it's like indie pop music, but it's very, very cool pop music. It's not like the pop music on the radio. Um, it's just big hooks and catchy melodies and stuff like that. But it's very, very cool. I love it. So I think uh, stay on the lookout. I'm going to drop the GFBF album on y'all just like at random. I'm going to wake up someday feeling some type of way and I'm just going to drop the GFBF album. So enjoy that when it hits. Uh, it's very, very cool. My girlfriend's extremely talented. The songs are amazing. It's like stadium music. That music's made for like 20,000 plus people in a stadium. It's not like some little side project. It's like a big, big thing. Um, okay, so I'm going to take some more questions. Let me circle back one time. I have a brand new video dropping this Friday, 9 a.m. There's two ways to see it. You can either A, subscribe to YouTube, or B, that wasn't planned. Or B, you can join the Hangover Gang newsletter. <sighs> I'll put links to both those things in the comments. Please, if you see my comment, give it a like to push it to the top of the feed. I'd appreciate that. My new album, right? Ghost Stories, is out now. 21 songs long. It's incredible, if I do say so myself. 
Every single copy is signed. I package them, label them, and send them myself. I would be super duper appreciative if you went to www.hangovergang.com and grabbed yourself a copy. That would be amazing. They ship every single day of this week. The first shipment went out today. Second shipment goes out tomorrow. Third shipment will go out on when or Thursday. So if you want your copy soon, grab it soon because they're shipping this week. Third part of my promo run. This big press run I'm doing right now via Facebook Live, because I'm a big superstar apparently, um, is that I have two tours coming out right away. One with Struggle Jennings in October. First show is October 2nd. One with Falling in Reverse starting in November. Uh, you can go to www.hangovergang.com to get the tour dates. Also, if you join the Hangover Gang newsletter, I will be sending out a, a mail out in like the next week that has all the tour dates on it. So I'll put the link to that in the comments. Just if you join the Hangover Gang newsletter, you will get the tour itinerary sent to you. If that doesn't work, stay tuned to Facebook. I'll be posting all the posters. Okay. Now we've taken care of that. Let's get back to business here. I'm going to answer some more questions. Uh, uh, uh. Delilah says, out of all the music videos and songs you've done, which is your favorite and most fun to shoot? Uh, my favorite song is... On Ghost Stories, um, what number is it? It's close to the end of Ghost Stories, and I'm going to be shooting a video for it right away and uh, putting it out ASAP. So, I don't know. My most fun video is probably Everybody Hates Me, just because we did a bunch of... Or Buttholes was a blast. We did a lot of ridiculous stuff in public. I dressed up as that pregnant woman in the grocery store and I dressed up as that Canadian guy in his underwear outside and that uh, goth kid. And yeah, we did a lot of ridiculous stuff in public for that video and that was a lot of fun. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, I'm just flipping through your questions here. A lot of people just asking like, oh, is your show coming here? Are you coming here on tour? I already told you I can't answer all the tour questions. You'll just have to refer to the tour posters and stuff and uh, answer your own questions. I'm sorry. There's just too many. I, I got to get um, I got to get to the questions that are sort of standalone. Uh, Robin Dickerson says, what made you choose to do conscious rap over mainstream rap in the first place? I didn't choose to do conscious rap over mainstream rap in the first place. I used to just rap about random shit when I was younger. Um, just cause I didn't know it's just what I wanted to do. So I just rapped about regular shit, the same shit that everybody else raps about. Uh, um, and then I guess it was like three or four years ago had like this huge like mental breakdown that was followed by like a year of like acute anxiety and depression. Like I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't go outside. I'd literally eat one egg every morning and I'd be like gagging to get it down. Like my anxiety was so bad I couldn't even eat. Um, and I couldn't sleep. I would just like literally, I would lay in bed at night with a movie playing on my computer and a podcast playing on my phone because I just couldn't deal with silence. So, and I never really got a good sleep. I'd just be laying there staring at the ceiling till the sun came back up. And it was just like a really brutal, uh, whatever, mental breakdown or anxious, depressive episode, whatever you want to call it. It was just really, really bad. And it lasted like eight or nine months. Um, and when things like that happen in your life, you like really find out what you're made out of and you find out, um, who you are as a person and you find out what's important to you. And I guess that was the thing. I found out what was most important to me and I found out what I wanted to talk about. I figured out how I wanted to talk about it and I figured out who I wanted to talk to about it too, um, or talk about it too. So, you know, I realized that like, nobody should ever have to feel the way that I felt in those nine months. So I wanted to make people, I wanted to make music to inform people, to empower people, uh, to put a smile on people's faces. I didn't want to enforce the same old go party, drive a nice car, wear nice clothes, take Xanax, 
uh, drinking and all the bullshit. I just, if you want to do that, fine, go ahead. That's your prerogative. I'm not going to be mad at you for that, but I'm just not going to endorse it personally because I almost died and I had to almost die to find out what was important to me. And I found out that like feeling good is important to me and I want to make other people feel good. So I make music to inform people and to empower people and to just help people have a good time, have a happy time and enjoy their lives. So that was really it. It wasn't something that I started doing. It was something that I, uh, that I grew into along the way. So it's weird. Mental breakdown, worst thing that ever happened to me. Also the best thing that ever happened to me. So it's crazy how life works like that sometimes. Allison Bright says, where did you find the pony for the buttholes video? Well, believe it or not, if you Google unicorn rental, Google has answers for you, man. It's weird. Google really can answer any question. I Googled it as kind of like a joke. I was sitting on the couch with Nova. We were trying to figure out, oh, what are we gonna do in this buttholes video? And I said, I just wanna do the most ridiculous, stupid shit that I can possibly think of. And I said, I'm gonna have a pink suit and I'm gonna do all this dumb stuff. I'm gonna dress up like this pregnant lady. I'm gonna do all this silly ass shit. And then I said as a joke, oh, we need a unicorn. Actually, I said, we need some animals in this video. Can we rent an elephant or can we rent a tiger? What's the deal? And then, I don't know, I just Googled unicorn rental and lo and behold, there it was. So that's where we found her. Her name was uh, Snow Cone. Snow Cone, if you're out there watching this live stream right now, you're the most baddest ass unicorn I ever, I ever met in my life. Thank you for being a part of Buttholes. You were absolutely incredible, thank you. Jai Meredith says, hey Tom, what made you want to have your hair in braids? Or like, what made you want to have your hair like you do in braids? I'm just curious on my hair being similar. I don't know, I just liked it. A lot of people are like, a lot of people scream like, oh, this cultural appropriation. This white boy has box braids. It's cultural appropriation. <laughs> Super triggered and shit, but uh, I don't really care. I wear my hair however the fuck I want. You can kiss my fucking ass. Um, I just like it. So I rock with it. Rock with it in the music videos. Let's do it. Uh, Harold Ledger says, do you have a favorite car? Jeez Louise, lemon squeeze. Um, no, I'm not really a big car guy, dude. Don't really like cars, not really into sports. All that like super macho shit, UFC and stuff like that. Not really my deal. Don't really like it. Um, I am, however, I don't have a favorite car, but one day when I was in Canada, before the music stuff worked, I was a construction worker. I was a sorry ass construction worker. I was no good at my job. I was miserable all the time. And one day I was living in a housing system because I was so broke. There was this apartment building where people that were at a disadvantage could live for very cheap and all the apartments were called pods. So people lived in all these different pods. There'd be like six people in an apartment, seven people in an apartment, stuff like that. So in, and, and, and the uh, apartment building was hollow in the center. There was like a common area in the center. And in the middle of that common area, there was this glass box and it was like a terrarium where they would grow like tomatoes and shit like that. Uh, indoor in like a glass box. So I was broke. I was like going on about to be homeless and my friend was living in this housing system and he said, yo, I can get you a place to live for next to nothing. So I started living in this terrarium in this glass box. Like it was so fucking weird. I was living in this glass box for $50 a month in the middle of like these housing projects. And I had to tape up like towels to all my glass walls so people couldn't see inside when I was sleeping and stuff. Super duper weird. Um, and I just needed to get back on my feet. So whatever, that's what I was doing. I was working in construction. And one day I woke up in my glass box and I made sure all my towels were taped to the walls and I got my construction stuff on and I was walking to the bus stop. I was so miserable. I didn't even do up my boots that day. And I remember I was looking at my feet. It was pouring rain. I'm carrying all my tools with me and shit. And uh, I stepped on my own laces and fell. And I fell on the sidewalk and I was soaking wet. And uh, when I looked up from the sidewalk, I was right in front of this car dealership. 
and I looked in through the front window and there was this Lamborghini parked at the window, facing the window. So when I looked up off the ground, I was looking right at the headlights. And if anybody knows what a Lamborghini looks like, they're very sleek, they kind of look intimidating almost. They look angry. At the front of the car looks angry. And it was just this big machine looking at me and it had like a quarter million dollar price tag on it. And I just felt like life was just slapping me down at that moment. I was soaking wet. I was in my steel toe boots. I was dirty, no sleep, living in a terrarium, on my way to work at 5 a.m. And I looked up at that car and I just said, I'm gonna fucking buy you one day. And then I got up and walked my ass to the bus stop and went to work. So do I have a favorite car? No, but there is a purple Lamborghini somewhere in Canada that I promised that car that I'm gonna go back and buy it one day. And it's not because I like cars, it's because I'm spiting life for making me live in a fucking terrarium and walk to work at 5 a.m. in the pouring rain to swing a hammer all day and be miserable. So I'm gonna go back and buy that car to spite the universe and do I like the car? Not really, but it's a promise that I made and by God, I'm gonna do it. That's my uh, favorite car story. That's the best one I got. Okay, here we go. Um, Tyler says, are you gonna cover your body in tattoos? Yeah, bro. I'm gonna cover my body in tattoos. Can't you see I already got a little start? I'm not gonna stop here, you know? Yeah, I'm gonna cover my body in tattoos. Let's do this damn thing. Amber says, do people approach you or threaten you while you're out in public with a ski mask on? Uh, well, I don't typically go out in public with a ski mask on. If you're talking, if you're, I, I think you're referring to the Everybody Hates Me music video, and no, because in the Everybody Hates Me music video, yes, I was wearing a ski mask, but I was also wearing like purple My Little Pony tights and a bunch of other ridiculous stuff. So that's not exactly the most, you know, uh, fight provoking outfit of all time. People just thought I was a fucking lunatic. Um, a lot of people keep asking about wrestling. They say, Tom, will you ever go back to pro wrestling? Would you go to the WWE if you had the opportunity? Stuff like that. If anybody has an in at the WWE, if anybody's got Vince McMahon on their speed dial, you let the old man know that I am coming for my WrestleMania moment. I promise you that. I don't want to be a pro wrestler anymore. I have no desire to be a pro wrestler anymore. I'm in love with the music and doing this. But I promise you, this is another promise I made to myself. Just like that gosh dang car that I'm going to buy, I will have my match in the WWE. I promise you that. So I guess the plan is to just get so big and famous in the music world that we can just like uh, call Vince McMahon and be like, hey, I wanna have a match. And he'll be like, that sounds like a great idea. And then he'll book me and I'll whoop somebody's ass on TV. And um, hopefully you guys watch me do that because it'll be really good. It'll be really good. Um, Mike Ty says, would you ever go on a political talk show like Ben Shapiro? Yeah, I'd love to go on Ben Shapiro or Louder with Crowder or something like that. I think that'd be awesome. I don't necessarily share all of the same political views and ideals that those guys do, but I think it'd be very interesting to go talk about those things. I'm also not like super well versed in that shit. Like I feel like those guys are like experts. They have their arguments nailed down tight. Um, and I don't, I just have certain feelings and certain ideas and I, but I would love to go on there and just talk my shit, you know, even if they slap me around intellectually, I don't care. I, I'd be down to do it. So, uh, okay. So spam Vince McMahon, spam Ben Shapiro and spam louder with Crowder on Twitter and get me on those shows. Okay. Thanks guys. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry. Okay, I'm reading your questions. Okay, I gotta... Frankie Downs says, what do you really think of the music that's out today? Well, that's a loaded question. There's a lot of great music out today. There's a lot of amazing artists out today too. Sort of the music that I don't like that I've talked shit about is like sort of like the mainstream stuff. Not that it isn't like good musically because there's a lot of great mainstream music, but I just like the messages and stuff like that. I'm just not into it. 
I'm just not into the guns, drugs, cars, money, women, drinking. I'm just not into it. I just heard it. If everybody was making like conscious rap or everybody was making artistic stuff and there was like one or two guys that were like, hey, drink liquor, hey, drink, take Xanax, hey, blow money, it would probably be really tight because they'd be the only two guys doing it. But it's just that like everybody's doing it and now it's just like kicking a dead horse and it's just boring. And did like any more songs about those topics need to exist? Probably not. So I'm just bored with it. It's not that I hate it. It's just that I'm bored with it. And like I've talked about it before, man. It's just like the demograph for like mainstream hip hop is like 14 to 20 year old American youth. And if you're making music that's endorsing things like the frivolous spending of money and like uh, buying brand names to be happy and objectifying women and drinking and taking Xanax and material uh, possessions equal uh, status and stuff like that. It's just like, why indoctrinate like a whole, you know, why indoctrinate um, the a youth of our country with like weirdo shit like that? Why do that? It just seems like a stupid thing. There's a million things to make music about. Why Why not empower these people? You're turning people into broke vegetables. It's lame. So that's my, that's my thing. Um, okay, so I'm going to answer more questions in a second, but I got to circle back. My three points for this thing. A, my brand new album is out now. Ghost Stories, 21 songs long. Every single copy is signed by me packaged by me, labeled by me, and shipped by me. So please go to www.hangovergang.com and grab an album. It goes a long way to help me buy groceries, shoot music videos, do all that stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, number two, brand new video this Friday, 9 a.m. It is unlike anything that I've ever done before. I'm very, very, very excited for Friday. It seems like we've been releasing a lot of music videos lately. I feel like the last one, I'm Sorry, even though a lot of people loved I'm Sorry, I feel like that was just like a little thing. I didn't expect people to really fall in love with that song and like it the way they did. I just did it and I was like, ah, let's put this out. And we just did it and I didn't expect it to do well and it did really, really well. So thank you guys so much. Um, but this next video is a big video. It's a huge video. So this Friday, 9 a.m., check it out. Two ways to see it first, you can either A, subscribe to YouTube, or B, join the Hangover Gang mailing list. I'll put links to both those things in the comments. So join the mailing list and subscribe to YouTube. Like my comment when you see it to push it to the top of the feed. I would appreciate that. I'm talking super fast right now. The third announcement is I have two tours coming up. One with Struggle Jennings starts early in October. The second one was with Falling with Falling in Reverse. It starts in November. You can go to www.hangovergang.com to see the dates that I have booked with Struggle. I will be putting the Falling in Reverse dates there soon. Or you can stay tuned to this page on Facebook and I will be posting the tour poster shortly. As a third alternative, you can join the Hangover Gang newsletter and I will send you a tour itinerary and you can get all of the information that way. So there we go. That's my three points. My new music video comes Friday. My new album is out now. There's two tours coming up. I hope you guys come see me on the road. Let's get back into these questions. Tyler says, do you like green olives? Yeah, dude, I love olives. I love olives. Yo, I gotta address this one time real quick. There's like a... I'm constantly getting messages to the fan page about people saying like, hey, I found like a fake account impersonating you and like da 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 da. Um, there's a ton of Tom McDonald fake accounts on Facebook because they're trying to take your money. The only way I'm ever, ever, ever going to take your money is if you choose to go to www.hangovergang.com and grab my new album, there's 21 songs on it, every single copy is signed. That was tight. But yo, for real though, 
The only way I'm ever going to get any, in your, any of your money is if you decide to buy an album, get a t-shirt, get a hat, whatever, whatever, whatever. That's the only way. Come to a show and give me a hundred bucks because you really like me. Then fine, I'll take your money. But I'm never going to send you a message and a friend request on Facebook and say, click this link that's four sentences long and just enter your credit card number and I'll send you a hundred thousand dollars. Like, dude. That's the same guy that sends you the email that says, I'm a Nigerian prince and I need to deposit money in your bank account because it's not safe in mine. That's the same guy. The Nigerian prince with the money that he wants to give you is also the fake Tom McDonald on Facebook. Come on. If you're smart enough to decipher the sarcasm and the bullshit in my songs and my music videos, you should be smart enough to know when a Nigerian prince is parading as a Tom McDonald. But seriously, stop giving, stop giving fake Tom McDonald's your credit card numbers, please. And then getting mad at me for it. I can't hold you, bro. If you're making stupid choices like that, I cannot hold you, bro. Anyway, let's get to some questions here. Kathy Lang says, do you still sell merchandise bundle packs at shows or only online? Only online, Kathy. I'm sorry. I can't bring that much gear with me around the country. I just can't. I do. I bring a lot of merch with me, but not packs. Just t-shirts and albums and bracelets and hats and stuff like that. Um, okay. 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 If you guys have any questions, submit them. Derek Smith says, dude, have you thought about getting merch made like shirts and hats, etc.? I don't, I, Derek, I don't know if you're trolling me right now because I've talked about merch so many times or if you're really not fucking listening to me, bro. I do not know how to answer that question. Go to www.hangovergang.com and just find out for yourself if I've thought about making merch. You son of a gun. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, what else we got going on here? Lucas Paul says, did you ever think that from House in the Hills you'd be here? House in the Hills is like an old song that I did where I talked about a lot of things that I wanted to do in the future, having a house in the hills, having a lot of money and taking care of my family, taking care of my friends, etc., etc. Of course I knew, bro. That's why I wrote House in the Hills. It was like a premonition. I was like telling my own future with that record. Um, I mean, I didn't know like a hundred percent, but I knew what I wanted to do and I knew the potential was there and I knew all I had to do was realize that potential and it would come true. So I'm just happy that, um, shit, we're here and that process has begun and I'm just super duper grateful and really, really thankful, um, that all of you guys have helped me along the way, man. It's very, very cool. So. Travis Damashko says, do, do I have permission to use your Ghost Stories album cover on my prosthetic? I, yeah, sure. Uh, what? I think you might be talking about a prosthetic leg or something. I'm not sure. Arm? I'm not sure. You're going to like wrap your prosthetic leg in a graphic of the Ghost Stories album? You go ahead. That'd be badass. But if you do that, definitely... Definitely, definitely, definitely send me a photo. I have to see it. Nick Dwiggin says, everyone is speculating. Are you wanting a piece of Eminem? I guess that's in reference to like a tweet that I made the other day. Because Eminem tweeted, uh, everybody, what did he say? He said like, everybody wants to like, Everybody wants to fuck with me or something until they realize how big of a problem I am or some shit. I don't know. I don't really recall exactly what he said, but then I just tweeted back uh, as a joke, like, oh, I'm, I'm down to find out how big of a problem it would be. Um, no, I, I mean, whatever, dude. I don't, I'm not going out of my way. To, I'm not going to diss Eminem. I don't give a fuck about, you know, what the hell Eminem's doing or anything like that. And trust me, Eminem don't give a fuck about me, bro at all bro so it was just kind of a joke i thought it'd be funny so i tweeted it and it was funny 
and a lot of people just took it a lot more seriously than it was meant to be taken but that's just the nature of the internet dude people just love shit like that so i got all these messages are you gonna diss eminem please don't diss eminem he's gonna destroy you tom a eminem would not destroy me not even close B, no, I'm not going to diss Eminem. Eminem is the reason I started rapping. I love Eminem. I think his music for the past few years has been kind of busted. Doesn't change the fact that he's one of the greatest rappers of all time, hands down. There's no debate on that at all. So no, I'm not going to diss Eminem. Do I want a piece of Do I want a piece of Eminem? I guess I'll I'll, I'll take a piece of Eminem if he's handing them out. But I'm not going to chase it down. Not working for that one, bud. Um what else we got going on here? I'm 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 ripping through you guys' comments. I'm trying to find uh, uh I'm trying to find more good questions. Somebody said, "Is there any chance you can get castles on the radio?" That's not really up to me, man. I mean, that'd be nice. Is there any chance you could get castles on the radio? Cuz you probably have about as many ins at radio as I do. I don't know if you've heard my catalog lately. Politically incorrect, white boy, straight white male, buttholes, I'm sorry, dear rappers, hell of it. Not exactly radio friendly songs. I don't think they really like me over at the radio, which is totally fine, fuck the radio. Uh, 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 uh. Savannah Summer asked, do you make your CDs yourself? Uh, I write all the music, produce all the music, uh nova and i come up with all the artwork we do everything ourselves except for actually physically burn the cds because that would be impossible i would need thousands of computers and that would not be safe to have twenty thousand computers in my house burning cds it would be insane so i have to pay a company to burn burn the albums <clears throat> Dun, 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 dun. Okay, I'm going through. I'm reading questions. A lot of people ask, how did you start rapping and stuff like that? But I feel like I've covered my rapper inception story like many, many times. And I just like fucking hate going over it all the time. So I'm skipping stuff that I've answered like a lot, a lot, a lot. I will answer those questions again, just like maybe in like a couple live streams from now. I'm just like looking for questions that I've never really answered before. Elwood Yohi says, you guys have crazy names. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing them right. Elwood Yohi says, have you started work on the next album yet? Uh, mm, not really. Kind of. Yeah, I started working on it. Uh, what else we got here? Rachel A. Warnk says, who was the little girl in the butthole video that you had a tea party with? I love that video. Um, she was just uh, somebody that we casted offline, or online rather, and she killed it. She did such an amazing job. She was like such a cool little kid too. Like she just got along with everybody on set. Uh, she killed it on camera. She was great. What else we got going on here? Da -da -da -da. Somebody asked if I drink. Somebody said, Tom, do you drink? Uh, no, not really. I used to drink a lot. I used to drink like it was my fucking job. Um, and then I think that's partly what led to like the mental breakdown and stuff I had. I think I was just, yeah, just too much drinking, really. Um, I was never one of those people that needed to go to like, you know, an AA or something like that. Not that there's anything wrong with that at all. I think that's amazing. I think those are resources that are there for people to use and I think that's great. Um, I just personally never had to do that just because I almost died from that mental breakdown and stuff. So that pretty much taught me everything I needed to know about, uh, you know, how to, you know, rein myself in a little bit. So um, I don't really drink anymore. I had like a beer last week or two weeks ago or something. 
And before that, it had probably been a couple months. I went to WWE and I had like, I got shit faced at WWE. Um, but that was like months ago. And then before that, it was probably like a year and a half. So I just like, I just know myself and I know that like when I drink, I have the best time ever. And then I don't get like addicted to drinking. I get addicted to having the best time ever as often as possible. So I just, I, I pick my places now. It's WWE, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a few beers, I'm gonna have a good time. And then I'm not gonna drink after that, I'm just not. And then I had a, a beer to like celebrate two weeks ago. So it's like in the last year and a half, I've probably had like maybe like a dozen beers in a year and a half, which is pretty fucking badass. Um, but yeah, nothing against anybody that drinks, man. Get fucked up, do your thing. Kyle Haley says, do you see yourself making movies in the future? I've actually been in a few movies. Uh, I just saw a clip of me in a movie the other day. I was like an assassin and I shot this guy in the head and then I dropped this really badass one-liner on him and then walked out of the room. It was super duper funny. Uh, but no, I don't really, I'm not really big into being an actor, man. I don't really like being on set. I don't really like learning lines. I don't like being characters i just like being me and doing the music thing and I, I really enjoy acting in my music videos and stuff like that but in other people's projects i'm just like not really not really that into it just don't I just don't have the passion for it so okay i'm going through your questions again i'm sorry tyler weimer says will you do any more spoken words yes i'm going to do lots of more spoken words they're coming um heather mccormick says that's a good question where's somewhere you want a vacation jeez what the hell's a vacation i thought after i dropped this album i was gonna have some time off p.s my new album's out now it's called ghost stories every single copy is signed right there i autograph it myself i produced every single song i wrote every single song there's 21 of them on here it came out two days ago and it's available now www.hangovergang.com go grab yourself a copy also dropping a new music video this friday way different than anything i've ever done before i'm very very excited i hope you guys don't hate it i mean there's a big possibility you could because it is nothing like anything i've ever done before nothing for real for real like when i said i said that about everybody hates me it's wildly different than anything i've done before and everybody hate me was wildly different and a lot of you guys liked it this video is way different way 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 different sonically speaking musically speaking and video speaking so I'm a little bit nervous, but I hope you guys like it. So yeah, new album out now, new video this Friday at 9 a.m. Subscribe to YouTube or join the Hangover Gang newsletter. I'll put links to those things in the comments. Also, I have two tours coming up right away. One with Struggle Jennings starting in October and one uh, with Falling in Reverse starting in November. I hope I get to see you guys on the road. I think I'm gonna like put my hair up here. It's starting to piss me off. One of my homies asked me the other day, said, Bro, why do you always wear your hair down in your live streams? You said you're way more handsome when you don't put your hair down. You said you should just wear your hair tied up and you're way more handsome. I don't feel more handsome at all. I like it when my hair's down. Fuck this. That guy was wrong. I'm pissed off that he even said that to me. It made me look like an idiot on my Facebook Live for 15 seconds. That was really fucking lame of him. Jeez. Um, okay, back to your questions. I'm going through here. I'm going through. Marky Draving says, where do you record your videos? I record my videos all over the place. All over the place. I use Google to find locations. And sometimes they're across the country and sometimes they're not, but I go all over the place to shoot the music videos. Uh, Jacob Schweizer, 
Jacob Schweizer says, which tattoo is your favorite slash most meaningful to you? Uh, I think I've told people this before, um, but that's okay. I'll, and I'm like really fat right now because I haven't worked out in six months. I just started working out again literally yesterday morning. So I'm really fat right now. And the fact that you're making me pull my gut out on Facebook Live is concerning to me, but I'm going to do it for you. Uh, this is my favorite tattoo is this one, this like skeleton right here. It says, if you don't know where the fire started, you will surely burn in it. So I got that after I had like the mental breakdown and all that stuff happened because, uh, I just figured out, um, you know, I had like some deeply, deeply rooted problems. So instead of just like taking the medication and, you know, masking a wound or putting a bandaid on something that needed to be given stitches. Um, you know, you can solve the problem on the surface and look like you're okay and still not really be okay. It was more important for me to go deeper and find out where that problem actually started and put that fire out at its source. So I didn't have to take the medication and, and go about, you know, living my life like that. I'm still working on it. I'm still go to therapy all the time and still, you know, fight through it all the time. The last two days have been really hard for me. I had two really dark days for some reason. I don't, I don't know why it just happened. Um, so I'm still fighting through all that shit. So it's just like about if you don't know where the fire started, you will surely burn in it. If you don't find the root of your problems, they will eventually defeat you. So that's, that's why that one is important to me. The skeleton's like in fire and he's reaching out and he's trying to get out of it. And uh, yeah, it's just representative of, you know, our different, you know, problems that we have in our life. So if you don't know where the fire started, you will surely burn in it. Don't mask the wound. Don't take care of things on the surface level. Find out what the real problem is and attack it and, 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 and beat it from within. Bradley Rawlings says, you look like a wannabe gangster. Is the tattoos the same reason? Well, Bradley Rawlings, you're a fucking idiot. And not only are you a fucking idiot, but your question didn't make any sense. You look like a wannabe gangster. Is the tattoos the same meaning? Bradley Rollins, you sound like a third grader. Is your hat on blue? So there's that. Uh, <laughs> Jenna, holy shit. Is your hat on blue, fam? Is your hat on blue? Uh, Jennifer Tanner says, who's your biggest inspiration? Uh, man, who's my biggest inspiration? My dad is a huge inspiration of mine. Uh, super hard-headed, stubborn uh, dreamer like myself. So he's a huge inspiration. My mom's one of the most hardest working people I've ever met in my life. She's a huge inspiration. My sister is brilliant and beautiful and um, just one of the kindest, most intelligent, funny people I've ever met. She inspires me. My girlfriend inspires me the rest of the world and all of the insane things that, you know, happen every day inspire me. All of like my amazing people that are hanging out in this live stream right now, your messages and your support of me inspires me to go harder and go further and do better and create bigger. So inspiration comes from everywhere. I don't, I think you'd make really boring art if your inspiration all came from the same place. So I get inspired from everything everywhere. And it's just about, sifting through those different pieces of inspiration and finding out what speaks to your soul the most, I guess. Uh, Angelique Muller says, what are your views on religion? That's a good question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that before. What are my views on religion? Uh, I think religion is cool. I think it's totally fine. Um, I think that the second religion becomes organized, it starts getting weird. Um, so that's my main thing. I don't go to church. I have no problem with people that go to church. I've been to church a lot of times. It's just not for me, so I don't go anymore. I believe in a God. I don't know what form that God is in. I don't know if it's a fat guy named Buddha or an eight-armed elephant or a carpenter named Jesus or I don't know. I don't know what form God is in, but I believe that there is a higher power, absolutely. I just don't know what it's called, and I would prefer to not sit in a room with a hundred other people and read a book about it and 
have imaginary conversations in my head with that God while around a bunch of other people in a church. Like, it's just not my deal. I don't like it. I think it's weird. I think, uh, I think spirituality and religion are like a really, really amazing thing if you use those things for what you want to use it for. I also think they're extremely dangerous things because because they can be used to control you, which is my my main thing. People trying to control us, the government, the churches, the schools, the whatever. They try to control people. So I think that they weaponize religion and they weaponize politics and they weaponize pop culture and they weaponize things that we pay attention to because uh, we can be manipulated by those things. So that, that, that part weirds me out a little bit. I think it's a positive thing and I think it's great um, if you're into it and you use it for good and it does good things for you, then why the hell not? I just be careful with that stuff. Um, because you don't want other people taking advantage of, of you because of your beliefs. You know what I mean? Uh, Erica Ann says, what's your favorite thing to do in your downtime? You know, I truly wish I did have downtime. I truly wish I did. I like to play video games and I like to hang out with my dogs. And I've got a couple of video games over the last few months that I still haven't even taken out of the wrapping yet. Because, like I've said, we do all of this. We make all the music, produce all the beats, shoot all the videos, edit the videos, color the videos, release the videos, package the merch, label the merch, ship the merch, design the merch, do the website, uh, do all the digital design for everything, distribute all of the songs digitally. We do everything. So there's not a whole lot of downtime. When there is downtime, I draw, play video games, I do stuff like that. So nothing, nothing too crazy. Oh man, a lot of people keep asking about ICP because because there's a little bit of beef with the ICP. But um, I don't know, I, it's, yo, it's not, I don't have any problem with Juggalos, okay? I was a Juggalo when I was a kid. When I was like 13 or 14 years old and I discovered ICP, I fell in love with that shit, I loved it. I just grew out of it and moved on with my life and I never had anything bad to say about them and I never had any problem with Juggalos. I love Juggalos, I have tons of Juggalo fans. They're some of like the most amazing people ever at shows and they're some of the most amazing people that I meet, period, at the shows, they're great. It just so happens that like me and Violent J butted heads and it became this big internet thing and it just is what it is like that shit is so far in the past it's about it's like all the people asking about mac lethal are you gonna drop a diss another diss on mac lethal or how do you feel about mac lethal yo i don't feel any type of way about mac lethal i don't feel any type of way about violent J. that shit is so dead to me bro my mouth or my week or my life moves so fast bro i don't even remember what i did two fucking weeks ago you're asking me about shit that happened three months ago. You're asking me about shit that happened two years ago. That shit is so dead, bro. Like, man, it's, it's so dead. I don't have any feelings about that because I don't think about it. You know what I mean? Anyways, big love to the jugglers out there that keep asking about the ICP thing. I dig it. I get it. Everybody wants to know. There's just nothing left to know, bro. It's just dead. It's done. It's over. It's all good. Um... What else we got going on here? Okay, I'm looking for your questions. Let me circle back one time. New album, out now, Ghost Stories. Every single copy is signed, 21 songs, all produced by yours truly. Only place you can get it on the entire world is www.hangovergang.com. Please go grab one, I'd appreciate it. I am dropping a brand new video this Friday at 9 a.m. It's completely different than anything I've ever done before. I'm very excited about it. I hope you guys don't hate it because I love it. It's just really friggin' different. So hopefully you can handle that. Uh, the third thing is I have two tours coming up. One with Struggle Jennings starts in October. The second one is with Falling in Reverse. It starts in November. You can check the events section on my page or go to my bands in town or go to my website, hangovergang.com. You will find the struggle dates there. The Falling in Reverse dates I will be posting soon. There's also Falling in Reverse dates on the Falling in Reverse website. If you just Google Tom McDonald Falling in Reverse, you will find all those dates. I'll be posting them soon. 
I'll be posting all the tour posters. Don't sweat it. If you want the full tour itinerary for both tours, sign up to the Hangover Gang newsletter. I will email you the itinerary. I will put the link to do that in the comments of this video. New video Friday, my album's out now, hangovergang.com. Okay, let's move on. Dun, 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 dun. I feel like I've I've answered a lot of these questions already, so I'm just I'm looking for some good ones. Oh, a lot of you guys are saying that I really freaked you out with the last live stream because I did that whole thing to promo the album where like my candles were falling off the shelf and then I got up and a door opened on its own and then I got attacked in the hallway and I dropped my phone and got dragged. I got dragged down the hall and all that. There's some people really, really, really scared, scared about that. I guess you guys did, like those people clearly did not tune in and wait till the end of the live stream because at the end of that live stream, the like ghost stories album logo popped up and like all that stuff. Um, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I'm it's kind of funny, but I'm really sorry that I scared the shit out of you guys. I didn't mean to scare you. I was just trying to find a creative entertaining way to promote the album and to go live. I just thought it was cool. I still think it was cool. I'm not really that sorry. I feel bad if you were scared because there's a lot of people like, I'm gonna call 911 and shit like that. Uh, and then I was like, fuck, don't do that. Uh, everything's fine. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was a lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I did, it was great. Uh, me and Nova took, we shot that thing like four or five times and I had fallen onto the floor in that video so many times I had this huge bruise on my hip and stuff. It was a fucking nightmare. Um, but yeah, I'm, gl I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. I'm sorry that if it scared you. My bad. Devin Kasten says, do you ever get negative feedback from celebrities? Not really. Not really. Um, I've had a lot of really positive feedback from celebrities, actually. Uh, which is really cool because they get it, man. They know that's, you know, a lot of it is, it's just the fucking internet, bro. So they get it. It's cool. Um, okay. I'm still, I'm scrolling through your comments right now. Uh, Tanobi Haru says, do you have a following in Asia, like Hong, Hong Kong, China, Japan, or others? I actually have like a really crazy cult following in China, believe it or not. It's pretty wild. China has like their own version of YouTube. It's called like Bibli or like Bixby or Bibi or something, something with a B and a Y. Anyways, uh, a bunch of my videos are on their websites and they have like <laughs> shit tons of views. And there's just like all of these Chinese people talking in Chinese underneath the videos clearly because they're in China and they're Chinese. So they're speaking Chinese. Um, so I don't know what the fuck they're saying but it looks like they're having a hell of a time. So that's cool. I guess I'm gonna have to go to China and rock a couple shows. That'd be so rad, because it's that place has definitely been on my list. I would love to go to China. All right. Sean Hawley says, I'm an indie wrestler. Would you ever do a song for a wrestler or work with one? I have a lot of wrestlers hitting me up, asking me if, I, if I'd work on uh, entrance music for them and stuff like that. I'm like super duper down. I'm not gonna do it for free. Cause it's a lot of work, but if you're an indie wrestler and you want like custom theme music, yeah, feel free to hit me up. I'd be into it. I think it'd be cool. Still have a lot of love for the wrestling business. I, I, I'd be into that. Uh, 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 um, Jessica says that she loved my interviews with Simba. Do I have any more planned like that? No, I don't really have any more planned like that. Simba's always just, just you know, been a big supporter of mine through the reaction videos. Uh, he was in town and he asked, you know, if I wanted to hang out. So I did. And then he said, oh, it'd be cool if I could get an interview. So we just did it on the fly. Um, I don't do a whole lot of interviews. I just feel like, what could I possibly tell you? And then I'm, you're, I'm doing an interview for you right now. And, and you get to ask the questions. You know what I mean? I feel like this is way cooler than, uh, you know, me sitting around answering the same 10 questions that every interviewer ever asks. Um, so I don't know. It's not like I'm against doing it. I just don't really do them that much. 
I do this a lot. I do live interviews with you guys. Um, but I'll see what I can do. If you guys liked them and you enjoyed them, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm down to do more. Uh, Tyrell says, what kind of dogs do you have? I have, I only have one dog. My girlfriend has three dogs. We don't know what they are. Two of them were rescued from the streets. Uh, and the third small dog is the baby of the two that got rescued from the streets. So we don't know what the hell those three dogs are. They're just like little white dogs. They're mixed. One of them's like a chihuahua mixed with something little white fluffy thing and hers is like a, a Jack Russell Terrier mixed with a Maltese or something is what she seems to think. I personally only have one dog and he's huge and he's amazing and he's brilliant and he's a uh, half black lab, half German shepherd and he's incredible. So I personally only have one dog. I just happen to live with four. Okay, I'm reading, I'm reading your comments. I'm looking for amazing questions. Okay, check it out. I can't keep up with you guys' questions. I'm just gonna leave it at this. My brand new album is out now. Whoop, ghost stories. Every single copy is signed. 21 songs, every single one produced by me. If you have one, thank you so, 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 so much. You have no idea how much it means to me. You have no idea how much it helps. And you have no idea how many projects you're enabling me to create for you guys in terms of albums, mixtapes, music videos, etc. It really goes a long way. Thank you guys so much. If you got one, I appreciate you. I love you. If you want one, www.hangovergang.com. I would sure appreciate it if you picked one up. I have a brand new video dropping this Friday. It is way different than anything I've ever done before. I hope you guys embrace it. Um, if you don't, I fully understand, um, but I really hope you love it because I really love it. This Friday is gonna be a big one, Friday, 9 a.m. If you wanna see it first, you can either subscribe to YouTube or join the Hangover Gang newsletter. Those are the two ways to say it before, see it before anybody else. I will put those links in the comments. When you see my comment, please give it the thumbs up to push it to the top of the feed and make it easier for other people. I will be hitting the road and seeing you guys on tour. I will be giving you guys high fives. I will be giving you guys handshakes. I will be giving you guys Hugs, I'll be giving you guys a hard time if you give me one. It's going to be a blast. I will see you on the road. The first shows start in October with Struggle Jennings. You can go to hangovergang.com and get those dates, or you can check the events section on this page, or you can go to my bands in town. The second tour starts in November, and it is with Falling in Reverse. It is going to be a wild, wild time. We are going all over the country. I cannot wait to see you guys. I cannot wait to hear your stories. I cannot wait to give you hugs. I love you so much. New album's out now. Brand new video starts this Friday. I absolutely cannot wait to give you this guys this video. It's another song off my new album. It's completely different than anything I've ever done before. I hope you enjoy it. I love you guys so much. You saved my life more times than I even care to remember at this point. I wish that I could find the words that you guys deserve to hear but it would just be impossible. So I will leave it at, I love you guys so, so, so much. Enjoy the new album. Enjoy the new video on Friday. I will see you on the road soon. And don't forget, their death threats worth ghost stories. I love y'all. Peace.